it's been a while. Um, before we show this video, um, I wanted to share off this here. So these are your um, transfer case, uh, which is the center of the truck with the 44 bore corner part. Uh, 1.4, 1.8 liters. That's the size you're going to need, how much uh, torque to put on that when you're putting it all back together. Rear diff and then the front diff. So uh, a 27 millimeter socket just for the, uh, the front oil filter. So we have all of our fluids here. Just note, um, the 75140 figure for the rear diff is different for me because I have the 3.92 axle. You are going to need a different one for your stock uh, axle. Uh, we have the FIW40. You'll notice it does not say MS12991 for the spec, but it is. If you open up the spec for this, the 8100XS Gen 2 is MS12991 for um, our Ram Eco, Eco Diesel. Uh, also, the rear is going to need this limited slip additive added to it. Uh, I think it's uh, for the whole the whole four ounces you put in there, and then we have our fuel filter for the diesel and then we have our Mopar oil filter for the engine oil filter. So um, also you're going to have some um, silicone here to put your gasket back together. You uh, you apply it to the front and the top and the bottom of your um, diff transfer case etc um, in order to get all that to marry back up. And yeah we're going to use this um, wire brush to clean things up a little bit. It's all it's all coming together. We'll be fine. But uh, it's a lot of stuff here. It's going to go through. Oh, and then back here we have our um, air filter for the diesel, eco diesel. So, yeah, it's um, a lot of stuff. But yeah, we're doing a lot here. So we have the, we have the truck in its off-road mode, off-road 2. So it's higher up. And you'll see here I've already drained the diesel fuel using my uh, fancy tube setup that I have here works really really well and next up I'm going to um, drain the um, 27 millimeter to drain take the uh, engine oil filter out open this guy up here to drain all that out boom boom and we're also going to be removing um, this top piece here which you can see there's some there's some bolts that you access in here to get that off so you can easily fill it back up. Um, I've also, yeah, I've already drained the rear diff as well. And I'll put that video in here um, showing kind of how that's, how that's going, but that's been drained. And now we'll do the, um, we'll do the uh, transfer case next. Now this stuff gets added to the rear diff, uh, put all of it in. I'm going to use a syringe. This is a BMW part, but it's just a syringe. You need a beauty supply thing here. But just suck it all in and uh, put it in there first, and then add all the 140 weight stuff after. And there it is, ready to go in. All right. So for the rear diff, that lower 14 mil gets torqued to 244 pound feet. The top to 18, we're going to add between 2.2 and 2.9 liters of this uh, 140 weight uh, rear diff fluid. And it's a 14 mil and an 8 mil hex. Now, as you can see, I have the off-road package installed. So I've got four 13 millimeter bolts that are holding, connected to the, uh, the frame there, which are keeping me from getting to the fill and drain plug on that front transfer case. So one, two, and there's two on the rear. Get those off and you'll be able to get back in there. I gotta find the torque specs though before I spat off something I don't know anything about. So I was actually wrong. That skid plate was uh, 16 millimeter for the two holes there and the two holes are back there. 
So 16 mils, and then we have an eight millimeter hex. The bottom uh, of the port there is the drain. Up is the fill. So I'll point them out for you. Drain and fill right here. And it's loose. We've got the drain pan right under it. And we're just gonna drop this fluid right out. There we go. It's actually pretty clean, all things considered. We're going to reapply uh, RTV sealant to both of these so you can take the fill and the drain, both of them out. This will flow nicer once that's emptied or opened up and uh, get those ready to refill. There we go. Make sure you don't mess them up either. So I have my own system and figure out what yours is. But let that drain all the way out and we're, uh, we're making good progress. All right. So as you can see here, got a little bit of residue there, but uh, top and bottom. So we filled it with the 75 and the 85 and uh, took about one and a half liters to fill this up. Um, we're on flat surface and this got basically right to where it just started overflowing and we knew we were good. It came out super clean, so this is actually not too bad. And uh, eight millimeter hex on top and bottom, torqued to 25 foot pounds. And now we're gonna reinstall the uh, under uh, skid plate here with those 16 mil bolts. I'm gonna torque those down with some Loctite 243 to about 75 foot pounds. Um, it's probably a little more than they need. I'm guessing probably 50 is probably safe, but uh, that's just what I'm doing. Uh, I don't have a service manual to know what they should be torqued down to. All right, so that's gonna get done next. We'll clean that up and get that installed. And then we'll move on to the, uh, because I have the off-road uh, package. Also has a skid plate under it. So it's once again, these 16 mil bolts. There's one, I'll show you maybe closer here. This one here is really hard to get to unless you have a, a nice, uh, wrench that's narrow and low profile the other ones you can get to here and then back there with just a standard 16 mil socket um, and then there's your diesel fuel filter we'll do that next but yeah transfication is right there and it's protected by the skid plate if you don't have the package then you're already done <laughs> all right that sound you hear is uh, me draining the water out of the diesel uh, fuel filter so that's the next step uh, but this is all tightened up, so that was 15 foot-pounds for the drain and the fill plug, both 3-8 square for the fill hole. So all you need is a 3 8 driver to really screw those in. And I got in about 1.5 liters of that um, uh, BW44 fluid in there. Now I have to get my 16 mil and some Loctite and get this uh, skid plate right here back on the bottom. But good progress. A lot of diesel fuel in there, so let that drain for a while. It'll be fine. Uh, once that's done, we're going to remove that and replace the diesel fuel filter. So these were two T30s, one there and one there. It helps me get the engine cover off. I also threw a flathead onto here, checked the air filter, pulled it out. It's looking good. There's no dirt in there at all. I changed it 3,000 miles ago, so it's not due for a service, but I check it anyway, just for uh, peace of mind. Uh, once we get the oil filter out here, we can start to uh, fill the engine oil back up. All right, oil filter torqued to 25. We have our Motul 5W40, and uh, everything's kind of exposed here. There's your oil fill plug. Obviously, make sure your drain plug is tightened down, please. <laughs> Well, what a day. It's almost sunset. Sun is setting now. Took the full eight liters, a 5W40. Uh, I got, you know, I got a little aggressive. I went in and replaced the air filter anyway. I do that sometimes where I'm just like, well, I'm already in there. I replaced the air filter. So, um, man, what a, what a time that was. So this is the air filter, by the way, part number, if you want a, a non-OEM replacement. This is, um, yeah, pretty good stuff. So, um, you know, once again, we just, we did a lot today. It took me about uh, five hours total. First time doing this though, five hours and no lift. The important part there is I have no lift. I do have air suspension on my Ram. So, you know, you're gonna have um, a tougher time than me if you don't have a lift. The problem is, is when you're doing the, the, the diffs and the transfer cases, you have to be fully level. 
And so if you're not fully level, you're going to be over under. So that's the problem is like with a lift, you need a, a two post. You can't just do jack jacks unless you do all four jack stands and make sure it's all level. But anyway, um, order everything for blob parts. I'll link to everything below. Um, super simple. You're just going to need the right tools is all I'll say. You know, so make sure you have a half inch drive, uh, three quarters, is it three quarters or three eighths? What do I have here? Uh, three eighths drive. Uh, 8 mil, 14 mil, 3 eighth, um, square bit. You're going to need a 3 8 and a half inch torque wrench. You're going to need a pick. You're going to need um, some kind of a syringe to get that MS-12991 uh, anti-slip stuff in there. You're going to need Loctite 243. Uh, you're going to need uh, 27 mil. You're going to need a 28 mil. And by the way, I don't have a 28 mil, so I'm ordering that part for tomorrow. So I'll put the... You know, well, tomorrow you will see the fuel filter done in this video. <laughs> 27 mil, uh, 28 mil socket, which will be a half inch drive. You're gonna need T30s for the uh, engine bay. You're gonna need uh, flatheads for the air filter. You're going to need, um, you wanna need a breaker bar. Um, what else do I need? Oh, the 16 mil socket, but also the 16 mil um, uh, ratchet wrench uh, that I use from Wera that allows you to get in that small space that the other skid plate is if you have the off-road package. Uh, what else? Man, um, yeah, that's that's pretty much it as far as what you're going to need. Uh, as, uh, you know, draining your oil, I can't remember what socket size is for the oil drain because I have that uh, that aftermarket thing I installed in a previous video. But it's a lot of stuff. So, um, you know, be prepared, get ready, and uh, if you have all that stuff on hand, do it yourself. You'll save yourself a ton of money over what the dealer would cost. All right, thanks for watching.